Well, we're finally back. I sure do love the Metroid series, but maybe trying to tackle all of the largest games in the franchise in one month, a single week between each video was a bit much. So maybe we'll have to tone it down a little bit next year, but what better way to ease back into things than returning to the world of licensed superhero games? Last year, I took a look at the MCU tie-in games, and you might remember that I played The Incredible Hulk and did not have a particularly good time. But it's not the only game featuring our big green rage boy out there, and I've heard some fantastic things about Hulk Ultimate Destruction. But it's still not time for that one just yet. We will get there, and I've been wanting to talk about Ultimate Destruction for a while now, but before we do, I think it's important to take some time to look at its predecessor. So spoilers for those concerned, this is Hulk 2003 for the PlayStation 2. You know, normally I actually have like footage of the game I'm talking about playing on this TV back here, but I was cleaning out my office this past weekend and I lost the disc. Um, I don't know what happened to it. I looked everywhere. I can't find it and I don't know how I managed to misplace it. So I hope you like the swirling blue lights. I know I do. So, like The Incredible Hulk, this game was developed to tie in with a film releasing around the same time, that being the 2003 Hulk movie directed by Ang Lee. People don't really like this one, and I don't blame them. On some levels, there's some interesting allegories here about suffering from mental illness, but then there's also just everything else. One of the greatest sins of the film is that outside of its bizarre editing choices, it's just boring and not really all that memorable. That said, there's not a whole lot of overlap here, outside of a couple of cast members from the film returning for this project, I think the game's plot takes place after the events of the movie, but the film and the game are very disconnected. I think if you have even the most basic understanding of the Hulk character, you can jump right into this game without any extra homework to catch up. I think this is an overall benefit to the whole game, too. It feels like the events of this title could just be plucked from some point in the Hulk's comics run, and it really never gets overly complicated. You start off with a little area to play around with the controls. Bruce Banner is on the run, as he often is, and stops at some dingy gas station in the middle of the desert, tormented by the beast inside him. I saw this scene as a kid and it always stuck out to me as one of the most iconic visuals for the character. It's jarring and violent, but I think it really helps sell what it's like for him to live with the Hulk curse. Of course, wherever Puny Banner goes, the military isn't far behind and your tutorial fodder has arrived to get knocked around. So here you can punch things, uh, you can punch things, you can pick up objects and throw them around, you can punch things, maybe punch a thing or two, and yeah, this joke is already getting pretty dumb. The point is, there's not a lot going on with this combat. It's a 3D beat em up style game. Well at least in the sense that you're faced with waves of enemies and you have to beat them up to progress. I'm sorry if that description offends any wise guys out there who apparently have a PhD in differentiating game genres. You can swing your fists around, grab enemies, and use a finishing move on them or throw them, and by using the two combos that exist in this game, you can use the thunderclap to disorient enemies or stomp on the ground. Actually, if you use that last one in an area with a ceiling, you'll actually get some debris to fall to the ground that you can use as a weapon. It's particularly useful for some later fights. No block button, though? and I'll get into why that becomes a problem later on, but you do have some level of defense, I guess. Obviously, you can just move out of the way of some attacks, but when an enemy is firing a missile at you, punching it at just the right moment will return it to sender. I feel like that's not at all how missiles work, but this is a video game about the Hulk. I'm not gonna complain about scientific realism. You've also got a rage meter that fills up over time, and when it hits maximum, you enter a rage mode and deal a lot more damage. Not really a whole lot more to say about it than that. But yeah, here you are. Your gameplay loop is just jogging around in these few corridors, mashing a couple of buttons, and smacking people around until they stop spawning in. Until... Until the guys stop... Guys! Guys, lay off! Okay, so yeah, you're gonna have a few sections in here that just have enemies coming in to cause you trouble with no limits. It almost feels like the game itself is trying to tell me that the combat just really doesn't matter and I need to just scurry off to the next objective. It's a weird feeling. And yes, it does get dull and it doesn't really take all that long to get there. The extremely limited moveset is one thing, but you're also gonna see a lot of the same enemies from level one all the way to the end of the game. Hulk 2003 doesn't really have much to throw at you and you don't have much to throw at it either. Negativity. There's a, there's a lot of negativity going on here so far, and yeah, when I first played through this game, I really wasn't feeling all that engaged. It felt very generic and basic, but after sitting on it a bit, there are things about this game that I've come to appreciate. 
The first thing worth highlighting might be the art style. I think the cell shaded approach was a good idea. It might not be the best use of the tech I've seen, but these were the same guys that put together Simpsons Hit and Run, so they definitely know what they're doing. Plus, I think it's helped the game age a bit more gracefully than some of the others of its era, and it let the team design some more comic book style characters that aren't tied down to fitting in with a more realistic art style. I wish I had more praise for the rest of the game's presentation. The music is serviceable, and the voice acting just scrapes on by. It's fine. The visuals are still worth appreciating, though, especially when so many other games like this at the time felt the need to mimic the live-action style of the movie they were inspired by. Way to go against the grain. Uh, except for these Gamma Dogs. I hate these. That's, that's the stuff of nightmares right there. Just look at those mouths. Now, if I had to sum up this experience just in terms of its base gameplay, it's rather poor. I can't recall much about the way this game is laid out. It's mostly linear paths with enemies you've taken out countless times already, and a pretty good amount of this game just feels like like just going through the motions. That said, this game does have a couple tricks up its sleeve that legitimately impressed me. I don't think they really helped save the game, but if nothing else, I'm really glad I finally sat down to play this after all of these years so I could gain some appreciation for what the team was doing here. Like I said before, going for an original story this time around, that's a good idea. It centers around Bruce Banner being tricked by a man named Professor Crawford to enter a facility in San Francisco with the promise of a cure to the Hulk. Once he gets there though, Crawford drains a portion of the Hulk's gamma powers for himself, transforming it to Ravage, kind of a deranged solution to him being stuck in a wheelchair, but hey, what would you do? Ravage escapes to deliver the Gamma Orb full of Banner's radiation to the leader, who's amassing an army of Gamma-boosted soldiers in secret facilities beneath Alcatraz Island. Bruce pursues, using his knowledge as a scientist and the brawn of the Hulk to lay waste to the leader's plans and even take out some of his bigger lackeys like Half-Life, Madman, and Flux. These boss fights are okay. I think the best one is against Half-Life, where you have to use the environment to deal damage to him, as attacking him head on will just damage you and power him up, so it makes you think a little bit. The Flux fight, on the other hand, is fine conceptually, giving you a secondary objective to tend to during the battle, but my main gripe with it is just that it takes forever. The fight is definitely longer than it needs to be. Well, speaking of good concepts that don't quite pay off, you're not exactly going through this entire game as the Hulk. There's actually several stealth-based missions throughout your adventure where you'll play as Bruce, and while you do have some fighting capabilities, they're pretty much useless by design, and being seen and attacked enough times will make him Hulk out, resulting in a fail state in accordance to whatever excuse the game has for why you just can't smash your way through things. I actually really like the sense of experimentation here. I, I mean, in practice, you do get some fairly stale stealth mechanics. Uh, this ain't MGS1 or anything. Some missions are longer than others, but they generally don't overstay their welcome all that much. They just feel kind of random in terms of plot sometimes. Even if they didn't stick the landing, I think I'm just impressed they even tried this. Look, I don't have to enjoy something to respect it. There is a level of disappointment with it, though. I felt they got real close with one section where you're trying to move around the the base in disguise to complete a chemical mixture, but if you get too close to the other characters patrolling the area, they'll recognize you as an imposter and start attacking you on sight, alerting everyone around them. Not the worst idea, but there's two issues with this. One, these guys have some really good eyesight. Like, you get all of seven feet in front of them and they'll go into kill mode, but second, you're wearing a helmet. How are these guys even able to tell who you are? Or aren't, I guess. There's also this little hacking minigame you come across from time to time. You essentially have to swap around a bunch of numbers on the lower bar to match the ones on top. I think I failed this the first time I tried it, and then never again after that. It's pretty easy, especially once you know that the speed of the number swapping is only limited by how fast you can match the buttons on your controller. I think the only thing I really don't like about this is the bored, apathetic voice of Eric Bana chiming in every time it's starts. Yes, Bruce, I've completed this puzzle like 15 times already. You don't have to tell me how it works. I mean, you clearly don't want to, just going off the sound of your voice. I've got to move the pairs of symbols until I get a matching series. You know where it really works for me, though? There's a mission where you have to sneak to escape a part of the facility, but it's in an area where you were just tearing things apart as the Hulk minutes prior. This was the biggest moment of the game that stood out to me, because while I've seen this kind of idea done before for the Hulk, something about playing it out through a game just hits a little different. Kinda feels like this sums up my feelings about the game as a whole, really. I don't see myself going back to play this one, but it was a harmless experience, and I'm glad I played this. There are still some things about it that drive me kinda crazy, and a lot of that is when you get closer to the end of the game. When you catch up with the leader and Ravage, you have this big boss battle with the old scientist who conned you, and this is easily, hands down, 
by far the worst part of the game. This fight alone makes me really wish there was a block button because even once you memorize the attack patterns of your opponent, he can still hit you and lock you into a combo very easily. And you can put together pretty early on that the whole strategy you're supposed to have with this fight is trying to avoid one of his combos. So while he's still moving around and recovering from his attack, you can take advantage of this window of vulnerability and move in for a strike of your own. Thing is, even if you get that down and manage to pummel him through the entire first phase, he brings in some goons to start blasting you with gamma weapons that are very difficult to dodge when there's this much crap going on. Ideally, you should be able to get them to shoot at you and maneuver around enough so the beams hit Ravage instead, but to say that's easier said than done is the understatement of this paragraph. And to the one guy typing right now, you know who you are. We're all very proud of you for being able to get through this boss fight in five minutes on your first try when you were 12. It's very, very cool. Go ahead and tell me in the comments all about it. I'm not gonna respond to you, but I welcome the engagement to the video. I hate this boss fight. It took me way too long to get past it, and I had a real sour taste in my mouth when it was over. Thankfully, that is the worst of it. We are in the home stretch now. Use a teleporter to reach a secret part of the base, remind the earlier bosses why they lost last time, catch up to the leader, get your powers drained, get your powers back, and knock his giant head into the next issue. The story wraps up with General John Riker doing some gamma experiments of his own, which, yeah, he was in this game once or twice, but he didn't really matter all that much. Crawford tries to recreate the gamma orb to get his ravage form back, but it doesn't work, and Bruce Banner is on the move once again, walking a lonely road, the only one he's ever known. This is such a comic book plot, and you know what? I like it. Not love, but it does enough with the material here. The whole secret lab under a maximum security prison is delightfully cheesy. We get that classic reversal of Bruce Banner trying to get rid of his curse until he finds a way to use it for good. These weird and kind of obscure villains help make this feel like it was a real labor of love from legitimate fans of the material. And while I can't say this about very many games made for the launch of a movie, it lays down the groundwork for a pretty compelling sequel that could go into some interesting new places. There's some good stuff here. I can see the ambition. I just don't think the team had the time or money to see everything through. I don't really know if I would recommend this game. I, actually, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't, but if you find it for like five bucks and want to give it a shot, it'll at least entertain you for the afternoon. I might not be a diehard fan here or anything, but there were enough little nuggets of love here that leave me thinking pretty fondly of Hulk 2003. While the Ang Lee Hulk film didn't exactly leave behind much of a legacy, the game that was released alongside it actually did manage to get a follow-up in the form of the game we'll be talking about next time. So I hope you'll join me then as we take a look at the Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction. Until then, remember that my top tier patrons get to see these videos two days early. You can find me on Twitter, Twitch, Discord, Sunset City, whichever you prefer, links in the description. And of course, as always, spread the word, tell your friends, and until we see each other again, thank you so much for watching. See you next mission. Hey there everyone, it's been a little while, but uh, yeah, got a little uh, little break in there. It wasn't entirely intended, but I do think I needed a little time off after the craziness that was October. Thank you guys so much for being patient with me and just letting me take the time off that I needed so that I wasn't too burned out before jumping back into the review business. That being said, I do think it's time to just kind of take things back to basics a little bit, maybe do some fun, smaller reviews for a little while. I think the next like really big major video I I want to do is probably a review of Gravity Rush 2. I love that game and I got a lot to say about it, but yeah, whatever, we'll, we'll get to that another time. Next video you should be looking forward to, I'm gonna try to make it launch on Christmas Day? I'm not 100% sure if that's gonna work out necessarily, but The Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction, unless one other small idea I had works out instead. We'll, we'll see how that works. Of course, I would not be able to do any of this without you, the viewers, and my wonderful supporters on Patreon. I want to give a very special shout out to my current top tier patrons. This month, they are Brendan Hess, Christine Larkin, Earl Valco, Jeremiah Harrison, Jonathan, McKenzel, Mr. SP, Wanton Photo, Nicholas Morgan, Patricia Marcoux, and Cirrus the Skeptic. Thank you guys so, so much. I love you all. You guys make this possible and you make it worth it. With all of that said, thank you so much for watching. I have been Wayne, and I'll see you next mission.